Eric? Hi. My father said he was playing a practice match with you today. Is it over yet? Yes, yeah, you just missed him. Oh, that's too bad. Not for you, maybe, but not for me. He provides a golden opportunity to see you again after far too, too long. Somebody outside said I missed a hell of a match. How you doing, Mr. Griffin? Derek. Cruz. Did you find your father, sweetheart? I must have had the time wrong. He was already gone when I got here. Well, he probably went over to rest up for the party. Well, he certainly didn't look like he needed it. I mean, we are the ones who are exhausted because he ran us ragged. <laughs> um, I'll take I'll see you both tonight. Oh, yes, we promised my father. Well, I look forward to it. And we can talk, uh, we can talk more later on. Very Goodbye, then. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. What? <laughs> it's interesting. He uh, he says he wants to talk, and, and he looks like he means it, but he, he's one of those people who ends up saying very little. Yeah, I know what you mean. When I was doing those interviews, I mean, I thought I had a lot of material. I sat down, I edited it all together, and all uh, six hours turned into almost nothing, because he talks about a lot of other people, but not himself. Yeah, the classic man of mystery. Mm -hmm. Catnip to your average red-blooded American woman. Well, you know, I really have as much catnip as I can possibly handle. Oh, no, no, you know me too well. I, I really can't keep you guessing anymore. <laughs> so what am I going to have to do? Am I going to have to take you on a third honeymoon? What's your travel agent's phone number? How about a nice romantic ride on the beach? You know, my father keeps his horse here. We could take it out for a little while. Well, that's a possibility, as long as the horse could carry us both. Because <laughs> I'm really not in the mood to let go of you right now. Grab the coat check ticket. Oh, I don't. I don't think you gave us one. Oh, well, I gave him a coat. I should get it. I'll go check. Okay. I'll be right back. You bet. Well, I know you know horses, but I didn't realize you played polo too. <laughs> Well, that's a polite way of asking me what I'm doing here. Don't worry, I didn't crash. Kelly invited me to be her date. Oh. My mother was born in the U.S. That's how come I got dual citizenship. Look, I'm not asking you to bend the rules for me or anything. Just help me cut through some of the red tape. We did work on a case together. You could vouch for me as a fellow officer. Yes, I could, and I'd be happy to, but I don't think it would matter. You'd still have to take the tests and go through the academy. The Santa Barbara Police Department has certain regulations and requirements, and I'm sure they're different than the ones in Mexico, so... Why don't you call uh, Vic Boswell? Do you know him? Yeah. Call him and tell him you talk to me, and uh, he'll fill you in on the details. I'd really have to go through the academy first? Well, I think so, but in any case, you should call him and he'll tell you for sure. Hi, Nikki. Hi. Uh, I was just talking to your husband about some police business. Thank you for the advice, Inspector. You bet. Well, I didn't mean to run her off. She's probably just uh, ready to mingle. Mm -hmm. Which is what we should be doing. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> just because you have a date doesn't mean... Doesn't seem to me like Nikki's having a very good time. No, she doesn't really know anybody here. She knows you. I think that's why she left. She can't deal with the fact of seeing you again. Well, that's the way it's going to be. So I guess you better get used to it. All this? <laughs> What are you doing? You want proof of my undying devotion that does require a little privacy. What? You know, when I close my eyes... Keep them open.
Having fun? Yeah. Are you? I'm disappointed Nikki had to leave. I was looking forward to introducing her around. Is that why you invited her here? To introduce her to all these people with whom she has so much in common? She could use a friend and I could use one and I thought we would have fun at a nice party. That was very thoughtful of you. Are you insinuating that I had an ulterior motive here? Well, tell me this. Would you have invited her if Eden and I weren't going to be here? I'm sorry, I didn't realize that I was supposed to keep Nikki away from you. What you're doing is keeping Eden uncomfortable. And it's not a crime, of course, uh, but it's not very nice either, is it? I mean, I know you hold her responsible for Robert leaving, but don't you think it's time to give that up, Kelly? I know that you're used to seeing someone carry around a humongous torch for Robert, but I, on the other hand, have better things to do. Maybe let it go. No, I have let this go on long enough. You know, nothing's going to be over until you let yourself feel it, Kelly. Fine, then I'll have a good cry. But it's not going to be on your shoulder, Eden. That's too bad. Because I thought we might be able to share something without really half trying. What? We both made mistakes with the same man. We both had feelings with him. I appreciate what you're going through more than anybody else. But you won't talk to me. How can you possibly understand what I'm going through? He loved you back. And he just used me. Look, in some ways, I feel he did the same thing to me. He used my feelings to get reaction from him. He wasn't totally honest to me. When I think of the way he pulled me out of my life and him into his, I feel ashamed. You are not the only one who has been made a fool of. Well, thanks. But when you are loved and adored, it's not so bad when you're made a fool of. You can afford that luxury. You know, I really hate that he did this to us. It's not him. He didn't do it. We had this coming. Robert only brought it to the surface. Oh, now, come on. I don't buy that. I know. You see us as children. You see me, a little girl, running after you, cutting my hair like yours, trying on your dresses, learning to dance to your records. But I look back, and I see you gone. You are at field hockey practice, off to Europe. I would wait for the phone to ring for someone to ask me to a dance, and I'd pick it up, and they'd say, is he even there? Kelly, you are making yourself out to be some poor little waif. You did things. You went on dates. You had friends. You had hobbies. You, you didn't just sit home and sigh. It was different. You were the first daughter, and you did everything first. When I was elected class president, it didn't matter anymore because you'd already done it ten times. Now, I don't blame you for being born first, and I don't even know why we're getting into this. There's not anything we can do about it, so let's just not dredge it up, okay? Well, it's nice to see you two having a quiet moment for a change. And what did you say to this stubborn cyst of yours to make her listen to reason? None of us can make a dent. Eden's always had the magic touch, Daddy. And you're always the first one to say so. Hey, come here, you little brat, huh? I'm only joking, Eden. I don't think Kelly believes that. I don't think I do either. So do you think she left the party altogether? I don't know. Well, you try. Maybe it's time to let your sister uh, work out her own problems. You know, I love dancing with you. Almost as much as I love doing oh, other things. Just trying to have just be quiet and dance. Yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse us. <laughs> Are we going somewhere? Yes. We're going to bed. <laughs>